Alright, first of all we're going to go through a few of the basics that you remember about particle theory from last year. We're going to focus on how particles are arranged and why. We're going to look at how much energy particles have depending on whether they're solid, liquid and gas. And we're going to also look at how they move in each of these states. Last but not least, you have to remember the names for what's happening to each one of these. And most of these you already know pretty much off by heart. From solid to liquid, from liquid to gas, and back again. So when you have solid to liquid, that's when it starts to boil, we call that evaporating. All right, we're going to talk about solid liquids and gases now. You have solids, then liquids, then gases, and you already know a few things about these to begin with. Let's start with solids. You know that solids are made from little particles that are close together. So when they stacked in any form, the particles are lined up pretty close together and in a uniform order. This is how we make crystals and stuff. What you may not know is that solids don't always stay the same distance from each other either. When you add energy to them, they actually start vibrating and spreading out just a little bit more so that they look a little bit more like this. So the same particles, when you add energy to them, they vibrate, they push each other a little bit and essentially they expand. So if you add energy to them, they will expand because of their movement. And as you can see here, I'm adding in little symbols to show that these particles in that solid, the ones up here have more energy than the ones at the bottom which are cooler. Therefore they're spread apart and they're vibrating and they're expanding compared to what they were cold. Now give those energized expanded solids just a little bit more energy and they will end up forming and melting into a liquid. And this is where you see the particles starting to move about from each other slowly. They are vibrating still, they are moving around and they will then take the form of whatever container you put them in because they no longer help hold together as a sol solid. So these little guys have more energy than what they previously had and they're moving around. Now if you heat up any liquid even, those guys again will start to expand just that little bit more. They're still moving, they're still changing, this is still a liquid, but this is a hot liquid. This is a liquid which has enough energy that everything has now spread apart even more. They're moving faster, vibrating more, and it's slightly li uh, bigger than what it was before. So this is an expanded liquid because it has more energy. Now up until now these guys have still been forced to stay in the container that they were placed in because as a liquid they can only go side to side up and down a little but they cannot escape entirely. However if you give them even more energy you end up allowing them to expand in all directions and form a gas. And gases look like this. That gas, those particles now have enough energy to escape the container they are in. They are travelling much faster than they were before and in all different types of directions. They are also vibrating as well as moving and they are much higher energy compared to what they were before. And of course, in case you had noticed, their volume has increased. Whereas before it was stuck here in the container, it has now gone out of the container. So overall, they have expanded compared to the volume that they were before because you've given them the energy to. 
So this is a gas. Now of course the gases themselves, the more energy you give them, the more they can expand and spread as well. So this whole relationship between how much energy an, a particle has and how closely linked it is to its neighbouring particles affects the volume or the density of the substance that you're talking about. As it expands, it becomes less dense because you can, you're not fitting as much in the same area. Let's have a quick look at that now. So here is our big picture. We have solids, liquids and gases. You can see as each solid heats up, as each liquid heats up, as each gas heats up, you end up having them expand. So here we are adding heat energy to them. And that heat gives them the energy to move apart and expand. So if we wanted to put that in a picture, this little arrow here pretty much does the trick. This is the amount of energy that they have. And that energy then corresponds to how they expand within each level. They expand. There's a few other little things to go through. Okay, last thing. Someone mentioned yesterday about particles being attracted to each other. And that was one of the reasons why they were further apart or not as much apart. Every particle, every atom we're made out of, has an inbuilt attraction to each other. Okay? A force of attraction between the two particles. On a big scale, this is how gravity forms. Now, that force of attraction is really strong when the atoms, or these particles in this case, don't have a lot of energy and therefore are really close to each other. So that force of attraction helps to hold them together. But if you give them energy to start moving about, say as when you turn it into a liquid, that force of attraction is not as strong as the energy of movement that you've given them instead. So it starts to break free of that force of attraction and that and overwhelm it so that it's no longer holding the particles together. So yes, all these particles do have a force of attraction, but the more energy you give them, you can override that force of attraction so that they can then expand and move into liquids and gas state.